It is so easy to say you want to heal, to say you want to make changes to your diet, to go to therapy, to start moving your body more and worrying less, but it's hard to actually do it. The doing it part has been my greatest enemy. And you know, it took so many conversations and therapy sessions to realize it's not because I'm lazy. It's not because I lack drive and direction. It's not even because I'm incapable of doing it. It's simply because I don't believe I can. When I really thought about it, I realized that I wasn't holding myself accountable. I wasn't actually sitting with myself long enough to be honest about where my low self-esteem and self-confidence has come from. And this isn't a moment to pick myself apart and point out all of my character flaws. More than I want to identify every discrepancy in my behavior, I want to heal. I've spent enough time in my head trying to figure out the fastest route to happiness, whether it be a new job, an apartment, or even new friends. Unfortunately, those things are only tending to the surface while underneath I'm still struggling. Life lately has been an effort to be simply honest with myself because as complex as it may feel, it's really not. And if 90% of the work is to be done in my head, then why not maximize that 10% left and live free? I've been doing a lot of reflection lately. A lot has changed about myself over the years. Some things have kind of stayed the same, but I recognize that as I'm growing and learning, I have become more compassionate with myself. I now seek compassion a lot more than I did before. Last year was a pretty tough year for me. I lost friends. I was in a relationship that had become unhealthy and I was also struggling to really find myself as far as my job and my career went. I was really struggling with a lot of different things and then at the top of the year I didn't have a job and I was trying to make an income just based off of you know what I had at the time. There was a lot of learning but I think that one thing I can take from it all was the need and the desire to be more compassionate and choose self-empathy. I say all this to say I'm now on a journey to intentionally approach my relationship with myself. It's not exactly an easy journey. You know, it takes time to really build and rebuild that connection and that trust with yourself. So by rebuilding my relationship with myself, I mean building my confidence back up, building my trust in myself and my own intuition, and also accepting who I am, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I definitely think that this is a lifelong journey. I think it's very purposeful that I start this journey early as I'm in my early 20s because this is the moment these are the moments where you're really finding yourself you're figuring out what you like and what you don't like and these things are going to carry with you into you know your later years I recently watched Tariq Ali's video about a few of the struggles that he's had in the past few months and how he's been catering to and listening to his inner child. And I really love that video because it's just like, it's exactly where I feel so many people need to be. When you are actually taking inventory of your feelings and taking a moment to figure out what triggers you and how you can either avoid those triggers or eliminate them. I personally feel like in the past I wasn't as nimble with those things and I wasn't as cautious with my own triggers. And when I did get triggered or I made a mistake or whatever, I would beat myself up so badly. And I said in one of my last videos that I'm letting go of that, like letting go of this expectation that I can't mess up and also practicing Practicing repairing that relationship with myself after those things happen because essentially what happens is your inner child is kind of reaching out to you and telling you, I don't feel good. I don't feel safe in this moment and and I need I need assistance here. And a pattern that I have is kind of seeing and hearing that and dismissing it or 
trying to push myself into a solution when sometimes nurturing is all you need to do. I definitely feel that the things that we practice with ourselves are the things that we will practice in our other relationships. As I'm going about life and navigating my other relationships, I'm opening myself up to hearing and taking inventory of the way that I'm responding to other people's emotions too, because that can be a direct reflection of how I'm treating myself. I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and they were telling me that this is the time to mess up. Like this is, this is the best time to make mistakes because this is the period of learning. And, you know, I honestly feel that your 20s is a good time to, you know, make mistakes and do all the things. But as I get older, I'm not going to limit myself to only being able to make mistakes in my 20s. If in my 30s I make mistakes, my 40s, whatever, that's okay too. I just want to be cautious that I'm not making the same mistakes. You know, today I was reflecting on a few things that I have even done recently, the big things and the small things, and how that affects me. I recently started a fitness journey where I'm actually actively going to the gym more often, and there will be days where I don't feel like it. Obviously, you have to push through those days in order to keep your consistency and build your discipline, but there are some days where that just doesn't work for me, and that's not enough. I've been practicing with myself and being mindful of not criticizing myself for not doing something that I said I was going to do. I think that there's a certain level of grace that must be given to yourself for not showing up sometimes or not having the capacity to. And, you know, everything requires balance, but I do feel that beating myself up about it is not going to encourage me to not make the same mistake again. So I definitely want to be cautious with myself in those moments because those are my most vulnerable moments, you know? How you treat yourself in your most vulnerable moments really dictates what happens when you're feeling good and when you're feeling motivated. I don't want to operate from a place of fear. I don't want to feel that I am just making these moves and doing things because I'm afraid of how I will feel if I don't do them. I want to welcome all feelings that I have. It's not always easy to do that because, of course, there are moments, especially moments when I'm out with friends and trying to enjoy myself. And I think of one thing that just kind of throws me off for the day. Like, I don't want to continuously be in that type of mindset and that spiral so I just kind of want to redirect myself into more positive thinking and self-empathy and compassion because I feel like I'll go further that way from a young age we're really taught how to address ourselves and address the world and as we get older and have our own individual experiences those perspectives and those learnings shift and I think it's our responsibility to choose what they morph into. You won't always address something the same way. Something that may have hurt you in your teens may not hurt you in your 20s or 30s. And that's because of the ways that we choose to address these situations. I think in all of this, I'm just trying to become a more compassionate person and a stronger person. Someone who is a little bit more I don't know. I just want more structure when it comes to my own being so that when things happen outside of me, I don't feel so shaken up about them. And if I can create that stillness within myself, then I will be able to maintain that stillness no matter what happens. This year, self-compassion is definitely one of the biggest things that I'm working on. And I would love to hear some of the things that you guys are working on within yourself. And if you ever had to return to a place where you had to repair the relationship with yourself. Let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video.